Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Yesterday I released a video about dual booting Windows 10 and Arch Linux on a UEFI system. Today we are going to do the same on an MBR BIOS system. So let's get going. So we are here on the Windows desktop. Before we proceed, you might want to make sure that Fast Startup is not active in Windows, just to avoid any issue with compatibility with Arch Linux. Now let's go to the disk management here in Windows. So I'll right click on the start menu and click disk management and I enlarge the window here a little bit. And as you can see here, we have our C drive where Windows is installed and we have a system reserved Microsoft partition in here. So we need to shrink this partition in order to make space for Arch Linux. And let's right click here on the partition and click shrink volume. And I want to give this new partition 100 gigabytes, so I'll type in 100,000 here, since this is in megabytes, and then hit shrink. And now we have around 98 gigabytes of unallocated space where we can install Arch Linux. So let me close this up. Now we can download the Arch ISO, burn it to your stick, and boot your computer from there. And we'll meet back at the login prompt. So I booted up the machine from the ISO, and I logged in here via SSH. And the first thing you might want to do is to change your keyboard layout as the Arch ISO boots in the US keyboard. So if you need to find out which keyboard layout you have, you can type in locale, CTL, list keymaps, and hit enter. And you can see here we have a long list of keymaps we can choose from. So we need to narrow the search down. Let's get out of here by typing Q and clean up the terminal. Pull up the last command with the up arrow, enter a space and a pipe symbol, and let's use the grep function to look for our keyboard. So I have a Swiss keyboard, and the connotation is CH, so I'll type in CH here, and hit enter. And I have a few hits here, and the one I'm looking for is the first one, DE underscore CH dash lating one. So I'll enter this in the system by typing in load keys, then DE underscore CH dash lating one, and hit enter. And this is done. So we can clean up the terminal and now we can check for our internet connection. So let's type in IP space A and hit enter. And as you can see here on my interface number two, I have an IP ending with 48. And that's because I have an internet cable plugged in into my computer. If you have Wi-Fi, you can type in now Wi-Fi dash menu. And when you hit enter, you'll see a list of networks. You can select yours, enter the password and you have an IP as well. So let me clean this up and clean up the terminal. Now we can proceed by synchronizing the network time protocol. So we'll type in time, date, CTL, set dash NTP, and then true, and hit enter. So next we can take care of our mirrors because we wanna have the fastest mirrors when we download packages. And to do this, we're gonna use reflector. But before we have to synchronize the server. So we'll type in pacman dash SYYY and hit enter. There you go. Now we can clean up the terminal and install reflector by typing in pacman s and then reflector and hit enter. Proceed with the installation by hitting enter and that's installed. Now let's clean up the terminal and let's type in reflector dash c for the country. I am in Switzerland, so I'll type in Switzerland here. Then dash a for the age. I want to have servers which have been updated only in the last six hours, so I put a six here then dash dash sort and then rate because I want the server sorted by rate that means by speed and then dash dash save we want to save this information in our mirror list directory which is slash etsy slash pacman dot d slash mirror list and hit enter now we need to refresh the servers again so let's type in pacman dash s y y y and hit enter and we can now proceed. So let's clean up the terminal and type in lsplk to have a look at our disk. So as you can see here, we have what we saw in Windows, one partition with 579 megabytes and our C drive SDA2, which is 101 gigabytes. This is our Windows installation. We don't see here the unallocated space we gave to Arch Linux. So we are going to use cfdisk to partition the disk here and to have a little bit more information. So let's type in cfdisk slash dev slash sda the disk name and hit enter so as you can see here we have a little bit more information about our disk we have sda1 which is a boot partition and it's marked bootable and this is because it's an mbr system with a dos label 
I will prepare a separate video about DOS labels and GPT labels on MBR biosystems to explain the differences. Then we have also SDA2, which is the C drive where Windows is installed, and we have the free space where we want to install Arch Linux. So I want to create two partitions here. I want to create a swap partition and a root partition. So I'm just going to hit enter here to create a new partition. And I want to give the swap partition four gigabytes. So the rule of thumb here is to always give the swap partition twice the size of the memory in your computer. So this computer has two gigabytes of RAM. So I'm going to give four gigabytes to the swap partition. So I'll type in here 4G and hit enter. It's a primary partition. Yes. So I'll just hit enter here. And I need to tell the system this is a swap partition. So I'll go to type here and hit enter. And the Linux swap is number 82, which is right here. And we just hit enter there. There you go. Now let's move down again to the free space and hit new. Now I want this partition to take the remainder of the disk. So I'll just hit enter here to accept the default. And yes, it's a primary partition. So I'll hit enter here. And the partition type is Linux, which is correct. So now we can write these changes to the disk. So we go to write here and hit enter. Confirm by typing yes and hit enter. And now we can quit the program. So we go to quit and hit enter here. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal and type again lsblk. And now we can see SDA3, which is our swap partition. And we can see SDA4, which is our installation directory where we want to install Arch Linux. So we partition the disk. Now we need to format the partitions. Let's begin with the swap partition SDA3. So we'll type in mkswap and then the partition path. So slash dev slash SDA3 and hit enter. Now let's also activate the swap by typing in swap on. Again, the partition path. So slash dev slash SDA3 and hit enter. Now let's format also SDA4, our root partition, by typing in mkfs for make file system. It's going to be an ext4 file system type and then the partition path. So slash dev slash SDA4 and hit enter. And there we go. Let's clean up the terminal and type again lsblk. Now we formatted the partitions. Now we can mount them. So let's mount SDA4 by typing in mount slash dev slash SDA4. And we're going to mount this under the slash mount directory, which is our installation directory and hit enter. Now we want to be able to access also our Windows partition into Linux. So we need to create a directory for it. So let's do this by typing in mkdir for make directory slash mount, which is already existing. And then I'm going to call the directory Windows 10 and hit enter. And now we can mount SDA2. Remember, this is the C drive into this Windows 10 directory by typing in mount slash dev slash SDA2 and then slash mount slash Windows 10 and hit enter. Now let's clean up the terminal and type again lsblk. We can see our mount points here. So we have SDA2, the C drive in Windows mounted on Windows 10. We have our swap partition and we have SDA4, our root partition mounted on the slash mount. So everything looks good and we can proceed by installing the base system. So we'll type in packstrap slash mount. And then the packages are base and then Linux for the latest Linux kernel, then Linux dash firmware. And also an editor, which we'll need later, in my case, Nano. And if you have an Intel processor, you might want to also install Intel dash U code, providing some extra firmware for the processor. And if you have an AMD processor, you can install also AMD dash U code. I'm on a virtual machine, so I don't need to do this. So I'll delete the command here and then just hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. There you go. The packages are installed and we can clean up the terminal. And now we need to generate the file system table where all our mount points are stored. So we'll do this by typing in gen fstab dash capital U. It's going to be generated on the UUID of the partitions, then slash mount. And we are going to append this information by typing in twice the major than symbol to slash mount slash Etsy slash fstab and hit enter. Now let's have a look at the fstab. Let's type in cat slash mount slash Etsy slash fstab and hit enter. And we can see here we have our root partition with its UUID, the mount point, file system type, options, and file system check. 
same goes for the C drive we mounted under Windows 10 here. And also we have our swap partition right here. So everything looks good and we can clean up the terminal. Now we need to move into the installation and leave their ISO installer. So we'll type in arch dash root and then slash mount and hit enter. You can see also the login prompt changed and we can clean up the terminal. Now we need to work on the locales and first on the time zone. So we need to find out which time zone we need to tell the system to use. And to do this, we can type in time date CTL list dash time zones and hit enter. So again, we have a long list of time zones here. We can narrow this down. So let's hit Q here and clean up the terminal and pull up again the last command with the up arrow, entering a space and the pipe symbol and using again the grep function to narrow the search down. And I'm going to search for my city and see what comes out. So my closest city is Zurich. And you can replace, of course, this with your city and hit enter. And I get only one result here. So that's the one I need to put into the system. And let's do this by typing in ln dash sf, then slash user, slash share, slash zone info, and then the string we found. So slash Europe in my case, and then slash Zurich. And we are going to link this to slash Etsy slash local time and hit enter. Now we can synchronize the hardware clock to the system clock. So we can type in HW clock dash dash sys to HC and hit enter. So now we can work on the locale.gem file. So we can type in nano slash Etsy slash locale.gen and hit enter. So we need to select our locale here and I want to select English US. So I scroll down with control V until I see it right here. And we need to take the one with UTF-8. So we just uncomment the line here. And then we hit control O and enter to save the file and control X to exit the editor. Now we can generate the locales by typing in locale dash gen and hit enter. Now we need to work also on the locale.com file and we can do this many ways. This time I'm going to use the echo command. So let's type in echo, double quotes, and then lang, all in capital letter, equal the locale we chose before. So en underscore us dot utf dash eight, double quote again. And we append this information to slash etsy slash locale.com and hit enter. Now, if at the beginning of the video you choose your key map, you need to also put this into the vconsole.com file. And let's do this by typing in echo, double quote, key map, equal, in my case it was de underscore ch dash latin one, then double quote again, and we are going to append this information to slash etsy slash vconsole.conf, and hit enter. There you go. Let's clean up the terminal and let's proceed with the host name. So let's type in nano slash Etsy slash host name and hit enter. We choose a name for the machine here, basically. So I'll choose Arch BIOS in this case and then hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. Now let's move on to the hosts file. So let's type in nano slash Etsy slash hosts and hit enter. Go down to the empty space and type in 127.0.0.1 and then tab and then localhost. The next line, the IPv6 address, which is colon colon one, then tab tab and then localhost. And then in the last line, we'll type in 127.0.1.1, a tab again, and then our host name. So in my case is archbios, you replace this accordingly, then dot local domain, and then a tab again, and then again, the host name. So in my case, archbios. And then hit control O and enter to save the file in control X to exit the editor. Now we can give the root user here a password. So let's type in pass WD and hit enter. Enter the new password and retype it. And there you go. Now let's clean up the terminal and proceed by installing grub, our bootloader and some other packages. So let's type in pacman dash S first grub, our bootloader. Then I want to install also NTFS dash 3G to have access to the Windows directories. And then so networking tools. So the first one is network manager. Then also network dash manager dash applet. I want to install also wireless underscore tools and also WPA underscore supplicant. And let's install also OS Prober. We need this because we have also Windows installed. And two other tools for FAT file systems. One is mTools.
and the other one is DOS FS Tools. Two development packages, one is base dash devo, and the other one is Linux dash headers. And let's install also some packages for our Bluetooth adapters. One is blues, and the other one is blues dash utils, and also pulse audio dash Bluetooth, and also our printing system cups. And I'm going to install also Reflector here so that I have it available after the install is finished. And I'm going to install two extra packages. One is xdg-utils and the other one is xdg-user-dears to create user directories. And then we can just hit enter. Accept the defaults by hitting enter and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. So it's going to take a moment to download and install the packages and I'll be back when it's done. There you go, the packages are installed, so let's clean up the terminal and let's proceed by installing grub by typing in grub-install, then the target is dash dash target equal. This is a BIOS system, so we have to specify i386-pc and then our disk name, which in my case is slash dev slash sda, not the partition, but the disk name. And then we just hit enter. There you go, no error reported. Now we need to generate the grab configuration file. So let's type in grab dash mk config dash o for the output. We are going to output this information under slash put slash grab slash grab dot cfg and hit enter. There you go. As you can see there, we found the Linux image and also Windows 10. So everything went well. Now let's clean up the terminal and let's enable some services before we reboot the machine. The first one is Network Manager so that we have internet when we boot up. So let's type in system CTL enable network manager and hit enter. Clean up the terminal again and pull up the last command and replacing now Network Manager with Bluetooth to have that enabled as well. And again, clean up the terminal pull up the last command and replace in Bluetooth with our CAPS printing system, which is org.caps.capsd and hit enter. So let's clean up the terminal. Now let's add another user by typing in user add dash M capital G and then wheel for the group and then the username, in my case, Hermano, and hit enter. So we told the system to create a user with a home directory, that's the M label. The capital G is the supplementary group. That means this user will belong to the wheel group, which we will configure in a minute for the pseudo privileges. First, let's give Hermano a password. So let's type in pass WD and then the username and hit enter. Choose a password and retype it. And now we can give Hermano pseudo privileges by typing in editor equal nano and then by pseudo and hit enter. Scroll down here to the file until you find the wheel group we talked about before. And we need to pick the first one, which has the line all equal all all. And we just uncomment this line here. And then we hit Control O and enter to save the file and Control X to exit the editor. So now let's clean up the terminal. Now let's exit the installation and return to the ISO installer by typing in exit and hit enter. Let's unmount all the partitions by typing in U mount dash A and hit enter. And now we can reboot the machine by typing in reboot and hit enter. So I close the terminal here and boot up again my virtual machine. So there you go. You can see here Grub was installed correctly and we have Arch Linux and Windows 10. So let's continue installing Arch Linux. So we hit the first option here. There you go. Let me log in with my username and my password. And let me look for my IP so that I can log in via SSH again. So I have an IP ending with 67. So let me close this up and pull up another terminal here and type in ssh hermano at 192.168.178.67 and hit enter accept the fingerprint and enter my password and there you go clean up the terminal and increase the font sizes again so now we can proceed the installation and let's check again our internet connection by typing in ip space a and hit enter so as we've seen already before, I have an IP ending with 67, and that's because I have an Ethernet cable connected to the computer. If you have a Wi-Fi, now you can type in NMTUI, any enter. You'll go down to activate a connection, and you'll see a list of networks there, and you will select yours, enter your password, and you'll have your IP as well. So let me log out from here, 
and clean up the terminal. Now we can proceed by installing the graphic drivers for our machine. So I am on a virtual machine here and I need to install a special package, but I'll give you also packages for Intel, AMD and Nvidia cards. So let's do this by typing in sudo pacman-s and my package is xf86-video-qxl and hit enter. Enter my root password and proceed with the installation. If you have an Intel card, you can replace QXL with Intel. If you have an AMD card, you can replace Intel with AMD GPU. And if you have an Nvidia card, you can replace the whole thing here with Nvidia and also Nvidia dash utils. Then just hit enter, install your drivers and you will be good to go. So let's clean up now the command. And the next step is to install the display server. So let's do this by typing in sudo pacman dash s x work and hit enter accept the defaults by hitting enter and proceed with the installation there by hitting enter and it's going to take a moment here to download and install the packages shouldn't take too long there you go so let's clean up the terminal and now let's proceed by installing the display manager so this is going to depend on which desktop environment you want to install i'm going to install kde here so i want to install stdm as a display manager so i'll type in sudo pacman dash s and then stdm and hit enter. Proceed with the installation by hitting enter. And STDM is installed. So we also need to enable STDM so that it boots up when the machine starts. So let's type in sudo system ctl enable STDM and hit enter. And there you go. Now we can install our desktop environment. So let's type in sudo pacman s. The first package for KDE is plasma. Then we have also KDE-applications and I'm going to install also Firefox to have a browser available and also package kit-qt5 if you want to be able to update the packages via the Discover Software Center and then you can just hit enter. Accept the defaults by hitting enter. Again the defaults here and the default one more time, one more time and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a moment to download and install the packages again, and I'll be back when it's done. There you go. The packages are installed and we can clean up the terminal. Now let's proceed also by installing LibreOffice, our productivity suite. So let's type in sudo pacman-s and then LibreOffice and hit enter. So we have two choices here, LibreOffice fresh or LibreOffice still. I'm going to choose the fresh version, which is going to offer me the latest feature. So I'll just hit enter here to accept the default and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a moment again to download and install LibreOffice. Shouldn't take too long. There you go. And let's clean up the terminal. And now let's proceed by installing Ye, the Arch user repository helper, which can help us install some packages from the AUR. And before we can use Ye, we need to install Git. So let's type in sudo pacman s and then Git and hit enter. Proceed with installation here. It's going to take a moment. There you go. Now we need to use Git in order to download Ye. So let's type in git clone, then https colon slash slash aur, then archlinux.org, then slash ye dot git, and hit enter. There you go. Now we need to move into the ye directory, which was newly created. So we'll type in cd, then ye, and hit enter. And now we can make the package by typing in make pkg dash si, and then package build in capital letters, and then hit enter. Proceed with the installation here of the dependencies by hitting enter. So again, it's going to take a moment to download and install the package and I'll be back when it's done. So now we can proceed with the installation of yay. So we just hit enter and yay is installed. So let's clean up the terminal and I'll go back to my home directory. Now we have the possibility also to install fonts from the Arch user repository, but we have also Windows 10 installed on the system. So we could also copy the fonts directly from Windows 10. So if we want to use the fonts already present in the Windows installation, we have two choices. We could link the fonts to the system or we can copy them over. And just a word of advice here, if you're planning to use Chrome on Linux, then you rather want to copy the fonts instead of linking them. Because if some of you want to use afterwards Google Chrome in Arch Linux, linking them might actually make Chrome crash. So let's copy the fonts. We have a few steps to perform here. And the first one is to create a Windows fonts directory. So we'll type in sudo mkdir slash user slash share slash fonts and then the directory i'm going to create is windows fonts and hit enter and then hit enter 
There you go. Now we need to change the permissions of the directory so that it can be read. So we'll type in sudo chmod644 and then slash user slash share slash fonts slash windows fonts and then slash asterisk. So everything inside the directory has to be readable. And then we just hit enter. Now we need to reload the font cache. So we'll type in sudo fc dash cache dash f and hit enter can take some time to reload the cache here. And there you go. So let's clean up the terminal. And I want to install TimeShift, the backup program that can help us backing up the system. And we can use YAS to install that. So let's type in yay-s and then TimeShift. And hit enter. So it asks us whether we want to remove the dependencies after installing TimeShift. In this case, I want to set the defaults here and say no. So I'll just hit enter. And differences to show, I'll type in n for none and hit enter and proceed with the installation here by hitting enter. So again, it's gonna take a moment to download and install the package and I'll be back when it's done. And there you go, time shift is installed so we can clean up the terminal. Now we can reboot our machine. First, I need to exit the shell here. There you go, and I'll close up my terminal and I'll go back to my virtual machine and I'll type in reboot here. There you go, and I'll select Arch Linux and I'll go ready full screen. And there you go, we are now on the STDM login. So I'll enter my password and hit enter. And we are now on KDE. So I need to adjust the scale here. So let me go to the system settings quickly. And I go to display configuration, pump the scale to 200 and click apply. Then I have to log out once for the changes to take effect. So let me do this very quickly. Again, enter my password. And there you go. I adjust also the size of the panel here so that it's easier to work with. There you go. And I close this up. There you go. We are now in KDE. Let's have a look at the system. First, let's pull up the system settings again. And let's see if our printing system is up and working. And let's go to printers here. And I can see it's working. I can add a new printer here. And our Bluetooth is also working. Just I don't have any Bluetooth adapter in, but the service is working well. And we can close this up. Now let's see LibreOffice, if our LibreOffice installation is there. And indeed it is, so I'll just pull up LibreOffice Writer here to check the fonts and the version. And click OK here, and I can see already Times New Roman is already there, so that means Microsoft fonts were installed correctly. And let's have a look at the version about LibreOffice, and it's version 6432, which is the latest version. So let's close this up, and let's have a look also at Time Shift, if it's there. There you go. Enter my root password here, and TimeShift is up and running as well. Perfect. So let's open up the file manager here, which is called Dolphin. And I'm going to full screen here. And let's have a look here. We have 93.7 gigabytes. This is our Arch Linux installation with our directories. And we have also a 101 gigabytes hard drive, which is our Windows drive. And it's accessible from here. So let's have a look at our directories. Let's go to users here, hermano. And I see my documents, downloads, I have my pictures here, fully accessible to me. So let's say, for example, I want to have this folder here on my places so that it's always accessible. So I can right click on it, click add pictures to places, and I'll have also the pictures which appears in Windows also down here. Same goes for documents and download as well, by the way. So let's close this up and let's put back in Windows again. So let me go here and go to restart and hit restart here. So this time I choose Windows 10, and indeed it starts up. There you go, so I'll enter my password here, and we're back in Windows 10. So let's have a look at the disk, so I'll right-click on the Start menu and go to Disk Management, and we have our Unstreaming installation here, and you can see also the swap partition there. So let's close this up. Now, thing is, Linux support NTFS file systems because we installed the NTFS package, but in Windows, we are not able to access Linux partitions. There is a tool called ext2fsd, which can be used to access and write and copy from Linux partitions, but it requires removing 64-bit support from the Linux partition, which I don't want to do. So if we want to access Linux partitions on Windows, we can download a software. And let's go to the Microsoft Edge here and type into the search field here, Linux Reader, and hit enter. We'll go to the first result here, 
and we can download the free version or also the upgrade into Pro, which offer more features. I'll go to the free version right now, and I'm going to save it first, and then I'm going to run it. Click yes here. I'll close the browser. And click next to we'll proceed with installation here. It's going to take a moment to install the package. And there you go. Now we can click finish, and it boots automatically up. And we can see here we have our Linux drive of 93.66 gigabyte here. So we can double click on it and we can explore also its directories. So we can go also to our home directory. And then this is my directory here with my folders. So I have access also to the pictures folder here. Thing is, if I click on here, I can see my pictures and I can copy them over to Windows, but I cannot put pictures from Windows to this partition. So let's close this up and I'll confirm here. Now, if you ever need to remove Arch Linux, we have two steps to do. The first one is to delete the partition. So let's right click on the start menu here and click disk management. And let's take here our installation partition. So we right click on it and click delete volume and then confirm with yes. And we might also want to remove the swap partition by right clicking on it and click delete volume and then click yes again. And now we can go on the C drive, right clicking and clicking extend volume clicking next, accept the defaults, and clicking finish. Now we need to remove also grab for the master boot record. And for that, you need the Windows installation media. So let me close this window up. And I'll reboot from my Windows ISO. And I'll see you back in a second at the Windows installer. So I booted up now from the Windows installer. And let me just here select my keyboard first by scrolling on the list here. And there you go. And I'll click next. Then we click repair your computer and go to troubleshoot, then go to command prompt. And then you'll type in here boot rec.exe and then a slash and then fix MBR and hit enter. And this is done. So we can type in, in exit and hit enter. Now let me turn off the PC so that I can remove the Windows ISO here. I remove with the CD-ROM and click remove and then click OK and then start my machine again. And as you can see, Grab is not anymore present and the machine boots directly in Windows. So let me enter my password to see everything works fine. And there you go. We are now on the Windows desktop again and Arch Linux is not anymore present. So this is a full installed dual booting Arch Linux with Windows 10 on an MBR BIOS system. There you go, this is how you can install Arch Linux dual booting with Windows 10 on an MBR BIOS system. I'm gonna do a separate video about DOS labels and GPT labels on an MBR system and to explain the various differences. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can visit our Patreon website or also donate to PayPal via the website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.